G'day. Hello there. Uh, I'm Ozzy Robin. I'm Ennis Chant. And welcome to our European trip. Uh, yeah, long awaited first time going to Paris European trip. Should have been in Florida, but instead we're doing an alternative. And I'm quite happy about it. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Nice to get away, nice to have a break, and then mm -hmm. nice to see uh, Euro Disney for the first time. And first time sitting on Euro Tunnel. I've only been in a car before, so this could be interesting. This is my first time in about 20 years, so I went 20 years ago, but it's uh, you know, obviously a lot of water under the bridge since then, yeah. <laughs> and age. Um, yeah, we've, uh, we've had a pretty easy travel in, I'd say. It was, well, tube, yeah. well, tube was pretty good, Northern Line, Jubilee Line, bus was great. Um, yeah, yeah uh, and then checking in was quick and easy. And of course we had to forget something, so we rushed to, where was it, Boots? Antibac. So we've got Antibac for our trip, and then what else do we need? Oh yeah, and then prep. Um, so yeah, we needed some prep for later because the cabin, the food cabins may be closed. So it's supposed to be open today, but we'll, we'll see when we get on there whether it's actually open or not. I'll have a quick walk down and check it out. Yeah, um, so we'll see you on the train. Bye. Bye. Once you scan your ticket, you go through two levels of passport control. These are fairly quick. After that, you're straight into the waiting area. We did get food before we went through because we weren't sure if you could purchase food on the other side or if there are any shops. Turns out there was a Pret. It seemed to have most of the range that the outside one did. There were a number of uh, money change machines there. Uh, those two seemed to be getting fixed while we were there. And there is another one around the corner, which we'll see in a second. All the booths that had money change were not manned. I'm not sure if this was due to the fact that COVID has decreased the level of service at the moment, or they just aren't manned at all. I found this little booth that sold these uh, kind of goggles for kids, I guess you could call it, to do this 3D interactive experience. And actually, you know what, for three pounds, I would have given it a try. It looks quite fun, uh, but the machine was out of order. But from the videos you can see, it's, uh, it does look like a bit of fun for the kids, at least for 10 minutes. <laughs> Basically, it looks like a little uh, cardboard box that goes over your uh, iPhone or your touchpad, uh, your touch phone. And then you just look through the goggles. On the other side, there seems to be quite a few chairs with desks and they had uh, PowerPoints there. Uh, this was the business lounge. Obviously we're not posh enough to go in there. There was a small little post box from what I can tell. Not sure how often it gets collected. And a little duty free shop, which again was not open when we were there.
the reservation they made for us when they changed their tickets, they gave us a table reservation, which was actually really good. It was very spacious, especially for a big uh, six foot tall guy like me. The table kind of folds out, so it gives you a bit more table room if you do need it. In regards to the internet, I didn't really need it, but I just gave it a try to see if it worked. I think I was going for about two minutes without any sort of connection, and I just gave up in the end. I couldn't get anything going. On the way back, I did get sporadic internet. It wasn't always working. In regards to power points, there is uh, two plugs underneath the seat on each side. I did think there would be a USB connection, but I couldn't find any or couldn't see one anywhere around the place. As we mentioned earlier, we went to Pret for lunch. I had a chicken salad, which was actually quite delicious, and I need to eat more salads. Not a meal I would usually go for. And Darren went for the very hipsterish avocado toast with chili flakes on top and lemon juice drizzled on top, which he's had a few times in the past and actually really enjoys. After that, I started doing a bit of reading. I was reading some of the uh, latest X-Men comics that have come out recently while Darren was playing Animal Crossing, which I have no idea how that works. Hello there. Hello. So we've made it to France. Uh, that was a really quick and easy journey. Didn't even get much time to play Animal Crossing for very long. Um, but yeah, it was really smooth, really lovely, really quiet, which was great. And um, we ate. Yeah, the the um, food trolley was open as well, um, so we needn't to panic too much. But that said, it was nice just to be, have all the food ready for us and just sit and quietly eat. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, the now- The prep meal was actually quite nice to be honest. Yeah, prep was excellent. Um, I might start using them more often. Um, so yeah, now we've got about half an hour to wait for our connection train because the previous we were supposed to be direct, and then two weeks ago they cancelled the train. Um, so we got it. So we could basically change over to a connecting train at Marcel Saint Charles. Saint Charles, Marcel, Marcel Saint Charles. Um, so it's not too much of a hassle. It's maybe about half an hour later than we wanted to be there, but that's not too bad. I think it's about an hour. But oh, yeah, because yeah, we have to change it. Yeah. Um, and we've also had to change. The, then two days ago, we got cancellation notice for the return train. So we had to frantically try and find an alternative for that. Originally, it was going to be 7 o'clock in the morning, but we've actually managed to change it. So we're going to Charles de Gaulle. So we're going to change Charles de Gaulle about mid-afternoon. And then we'll be home a little bit earlier than we wanted to be. But yeah, it's, at least we're getting half a day in the park on yeah. the last day. And we've got a bit of time before we get the next train. So I thought it'd just be interesting to um, give some uh, opinions on what we're expecting when we get to the parks in Paris. What are our expectations? What do we want? What are we most looking forward to? Food. So um, yeah, let's start with the first one. What's, what's the thing you're most looking forward to when we get to um, Paris? Seeing, Here at Disney. seeing the castle. Yeah, definitely seeing the castle, without a doubt. In terms of just going inside or just seeing what it looks like or...? Um, seeing it in person, seeing the landscaping, because that looks really interesting and it reminds me more of the traditional art that they've had in, right, in the past. Um, just discovering it because it looks like it's more, there's more to sort of find within it. Right. Um, okay, so uh, what's the ride you're most looking forward to going on? Hmm. Probably Hyperspace Mountain. Because 
it's different. I, I know it's different to Space Mountain. Um, so yeah, that and also because Star Wars, it's Star Wars, right? Um, but also seeing Phantom Manor rather than the Haunted Mansion, see the differences there. I mean, to be honest, it's, it's all going to be quite new. It's quite. I'm actually quite anxious about going because it's it's exciting, but at the same time, I have no idea where we're going. I guess the thing for you is that you know a lot more about this park than I do in terms of what to expect. So my expectations are a bit more in check than yours. Yeah, I think I think the ride that I'm most looking forward to is the Ratatouille ride. Actually, yeah, uh, the interaction of the Ratatouille ride. I was quite looking forward to going on the Aerosmith ride because <laughs> I have a need, a need for speed. <laughs> um, you know, I like the faster rides, I like the ones that's a bit more exciting. But then we found out, <laughs> we found out yesterday that the Aerosmith right, ride has go, gone. Yeah. So, yeah, for me, uh, with the little, the little knowledge that I do have, I think the ride I'm most looking forward to is the Ratatouille ride. Seeing, uh, seeing how that whole 3D system works, uh, the whole experience of it. It's not going to be a rush, but it's going to be quite exciting to see how the whole thing fits so together. So technically minded. Um, in terms of food, what's the, what's the food that you're really, really looking forward oh. to? So we, we're booked in, I think we're booked in about five different places um, for sort of proper meals, like sit down meals. Um, there's not actually that many places open, so it was slim pickings. And, we've had, and a couple of them got cancelled, so we had to juggle everything around. Um, so apart from just generally eating well, um, I would sort of say the snacks. It's all about the snacks with Disney, and we haven't been for quite a while. Um, and we actually didn't eat that many snacks last time we went to Disney World. We no, didn't, we didn't have as many as we probably hoped. We should have had more stuff at Epcot, definitely, definitely more at Epcot. So yeah, I'm just looking forward to trying like the bakeries. Um, and again, it's all going to be a surprise for me because I've, I've purposely not looked too much into it research wise I've looked into the history of the parks more so I think I was really looking forward to the barbecue place because <laughs> we saw on we saw on those videos of that guy who does the voices I can't remember what his name uh, is yeah um, the guy who does the uh, Disney voices cowboy he, BBQ so we, we, we were really looking forward to this barbecue place after he went in there he said it was really good and well I was anyway and then uh, we found out that's closed as well it's not opened yet I believe so um, in terms of expectations I don't have a lot of expectations for the food I guess there's the Ratatouille restaurant. That's anyone I've really seen that sticks in my mind that where I, the food I, might be nice. But I I'm like sure. I like the film Ratatouille, but I hate actual Ratatouille. So, but it looks like there's some I choice there. Once that's actually one of the ones I have actually seen, possibly nearly all the way through. I don't I, know, I, I, I don't remember the end. I, I love Ratatouille. But yeah, um, I think I'm looking forward to trying that restaurant. Uh, any snacks? Any French themed snacks you're looking forward to trying? No, not that. And like I say, I haven't really thought about the snack part and I've purposely kept it as a surprise for myself right because um, I just uh, yeah I think there's so much I How rude. and on that note <laughs> it might be good to uh, call it a day and go to our connecting train but uh, I'll try and get some video footage on the train if I can and uh, yeah yeah, hopefully it'll be a smooth connection and it's all new to us, so... Right, let's go. So we have an hour before we get to Euro Disney. So I thought it would be a good time to throw some screen protectors onto my GoPro Hero 8. The dodgy ones are not like official GoPro Hero ones, but um, they're fine. The reviews seem fine on Amazon, so uh, yeah, it's too cheap to pay for the real ones. So first off, first off, uh, I'm just going to wipe the back. Then use the uh, wet alcohol wipe. Oh, this is too. Yeah, there is. Huh? Nice dry one. Just using the wet alcohol wipe, which I've already used. On the back, we're going to use the dry one. It's like the that I don't really want to do this for it on the front. It's dry. I'm watching the Swedish chef. Good, 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 good. It's 
like watching a surgeon. No bubbles. Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock have got nothing on this man. They might have done a bomb on a bus. Aussie Robbo, screen protector, two screen protectors on one camera. On a train. On a train. <laughs> Gunnall, leave that how you say. Um, so we're going to the Xi'an Hotel, this is Xi'an Hotel. So we're heading to Xi'an uh, uh, Hotel Xi'an CH. So I'm assuming it's number C. Numero C. Numero C. Numero C. I don't think he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> so we just got on the bus to go to the Hotel Xi'an. I believe it's free because we haven't paid anything and no one asked us to pay. <laughs> or we could just be taken down the back alley and beaten up <laughs> for our money and cameras. But uh, yeah. yeah, we're on the way to the hotel. Nearly there. Nearly time for the magic. I think we're pretty much here, so the bus ride has literally taken two minutes, if that. <laughs> Once we had checked in, we weren't sure where to go in the hotel, so we saw this guy walking past who would clearly work there and asked him for direction. And we just simply expected him to point us in the right area. And then he started to lead us outside the hotel, which was really nice. We thought, oh, he's just gonna lead us outside and point us in the right direction. And then he literally took us right all the way to the room. It was a really nice gesture that he took us all the way there and was uh, very considerate in doing that. We received really good service from the hotel the whole time we were there. I mean, we didn't have a lot of requirements or you know needs while we were there, but uh, everyone seemed really nice. One thing that did happen while we were on the train or getting on the train at Lille is my uh, GoPro uh, stand broke. Sheared off. Sheared off. Uh, this was kind of old faithful for me. Uh, we, I had this all over um, Florida, so I bought it right before, I, right, right when I got the uh, last GoPro, right before we took the last trip, and um, I took this everywhere. I actually bought a load of kind of cheap attachments for like the wrists and all these kind of other attachments. And then the one I ended up using the entire time for the two weeks was this one. I, I found it really good because you could put uh, two on. So I would have um, an iPhone attachment on this one and then the GoPro on this one. So if I wanted to use the iPhone or the other one, I could just change them around. And um, it was fantastic. You know, it had this cord as well. So I could, I, I held it everywhere. I never, I never dropped it, but it was always just this kind of safety blanket to have that cord there. But unfortunately, um, right at the start of this trip, it's sheared off. So that's broken now. But um, yeah, I'll definitely try and get another one of these because it was really good. That's, that's like when Thor lost his hammer. <laughs> You're emotionally attached. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so we're here. Um, it was a really good journey. I think the longest part was that last leg. Um, as you can see, I went for a theming today. Uh, so it's R2D2. This is an official Disney face mask that I got off uh, Disney Store's website, the shop Disney. And went through his partner in crime. And then the bag, well, you know, matchy matchy. But yeah, it's been a really good uh, day up to now. I'm just ready to have like a bit of a quick shower and change and then we'll get ourselves into the park. And the t-shirt that I'm wearing is actually one of Darren's old t-shirts that I rescued. Um, 
<laughs> it's basically all the islands that have been cut off in the Star Wars uh, films. Starting off with uh, C-3PO's, which kind of matches with your t-shirt, because you've got the body and I've got the arm. The kids, the kids on the journey really enjoyed seeing our t-shirts, which was nice. Especially R2. So, we changed trains at uh, Lille, uh, the station, and the train we got onto was a bit more of a normal kind of commuter train that you would expect in, say, England, uh, I guess France's version. It was a lot more compact, it was a lot busier, Almost every seat was taken, every, every seat aisle was taken. Uh, there wasn't very much room at all between people. Most people had masks on, but it was, still felt very compact and it was really hot on there. So the journey was only an hour from uh, Lille to here, but it felt really hot by the end and I couldn't wait to get off that train. Um, yeah, I, I could have almost fallen asleep if I didn't think that we were gonna be getting off so soon. But uh, we got here, we got fine. The station is pretty small, straight out, uh, out of the exit. The bus station is right outside the exit to the train station. It's pretty simple to work out which bus you're going to go to, to which hotel. We got on the bus and it was literally two minutes max <laughs> from the station to the hotel. I couldn't believe how close they were, um, which was really good. Uh, Check-in was really quick. There was a, a security guy at the, uh, the front of the hotel. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure if that's a thing, a regular thing at hotels here. Yeah, they've got to, yeah, I suppose they have to. Which you found it, because you didn't even really check the bag very much. It was like literally open your bag, so I opened the backpack. We could have had anything in our boxes that we got. Anyway, but we, so. he didn't check the suitcase or anything, so it was kind of weird. It was a bit strange. But then once we checked into the hotel, it was really fine. There's country music playing in the, uh, the foyer of the hotel, which is a bit bizarre when you kind of, you don't, you don't really expect it in France. No, that's the weirdest thing. Western and France just doesn't. I don't know, it's weird. They seem to be obsessed. But it literally looked like Dolly Parton's boudoir. <laughs> yeah. In a good way. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, I was pleased. And then it feels like you're walking through a children's set for a film or a TV or something, which I guess is the whole point because it's Toy Story. But then the, the interior of the reception is so... Old school. Old school detailed that you would expect in an American hotel somewhere, you know, in some small town in Montana or somewhere like that. It reminds me of the, we used to, where I was brought up, the next village across had a theme park called American Adventure, right. which was all Western themed. Basically exactly the same as that. But yeah, we're here, we checked in, we're in the room, we're just gonna change our t-shirts, uh, freshen up quickly, and then we're gonna head straight over to the parks. So this is the end of the travel video. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it, uh, and please subscribe and like to follow the rest of the journey through uh, Disneyland Paris for our first time. I suspect there's gonna be a lot more coming up. Bye.